during the lecture? Mm, maybe today's is a few. Maybe. Uh, let me see. One. Two. So I think uh, better the residents volunteer rather than I call the names, right? Because I'm worried that I accidentally pick up a, a specialist. <laughs> Thanks, Prof. So maybe Dr. Arfiza know them better. Yeah. If there, are, there are no volunteers, you call their names out. Okay. Maybe we can uh, proceed. Hope, the... hope, hope this is not too much for the residents on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but there must be some uh, sort of uh, question for... Yeah, open their minds, Prof. Maybe it's yep. better for them. Okay. Okay, we, we can proceed for the uh, 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 lecture, Prof. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our inviting professor. Recording uh, in progress. The, you know, this is program uh, held by Otorinolaryngology Head and Neck uh, Department uh, of Universitas Sumatera Utara. Today, we have uh, Prof. Marina Matbaki. Uh, she is a senior consultant of otolaryngology head and neck surgery of uh, uh, Tengku Muhris Uni uh, Hospital, uh, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Uh, specialized in laryngology. She was awarded in her PhD in laryngology from University College in London in November uh, 20, uh, 2014. Uh, uh, this morning, we uh, she will present about the lecture about the enhanced laryngeal uh, uh, imaging. Uh, this topic is very interesting for our uh, diagnosis in our uh, outpatient clinic. Uh, if you have any question, please uh, type in into the chat box. Uh, uh, Prof. Marina, the time is yours. Thank you, Dr. Alfiza. Um, before I start the lecture. Uh, what kind of uh, endoscopes that you you are using in your clinic in your center for patients with uh, laryngeal issues? Uh, maybe uh, we have uh, flexible, we have uh, uh, rigid laryngos uh, lary uh, laryngoscopy, but uh, stroboscopy or uh, other is very difficult in our uh, setting, Prof. Okay. So the flexible scope, um, is it a video endoscope or is it a fiber optic? Still fiber. Some 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 have a video, but uh, fiber optic is dominant for our our uh, hospital. Okay. So for this lecture, um, uh, it probably you don't have the technology yet in your center, but you need to know, uh, this is the advance, um, or the current uh, recommendation. Yeah, uh, technology to be used when you are managing cases with vocal volitions. So uh, probably um, we can think of um, having this kind of scopes yeah, in our center, um, especially if you are dealing with, um, you are treating patients with voice clinic. Yeah? And I think for residents, the theoretical part, uh, you need to know because um, for you to become a um, specialist, you must be aware of, although you don't have it, you must be aware of the current technology, yeah? the current theory, what, what is there in the literature about the, um, the um, management and uh, recommendation for the, um, what do you call that? For, for the current, yeah? So I'm going to um, share my slide. So as mentioned by Dr. Arfiza, the, the topic of the lecture today is on enhanced laryngeal imaging. So some people, when they heard about laryngeal imaging, immediately they, th they think about CT scan, about the radiology, yeah, about the MRI, but it is not that yeah, in this lecture. This is about endoscopic um, laryngeal imaging. The content of the lecture, or before that, I just want to disclose, I am the key, 
key um, opinion leader for Pentax Medical. But I don't have any share. Just a, a key opinion leader. Okay, no financial contribution. Okay, so um, this is the uh, UKM, University Kebangsaan Medical Center. Um, in this center, we have, if you see that this part is the uh, clinical building where uh, the hospitals, the wards, um, operation room. And here there is a small bridge that connect between the uh, clinical building and uh, which is hidden behind this building uh, is the academic building where the deputy deans and all the staff or uh, academics uh, side. Uh, the blue building here is a research building. It's, uh, it's called UMBI, Unit Molecular uh, um, Biomolecular you know, Research Center. And uh, here is another building for preclinical. So this mainly for lecturers um, who and students during the preclinical part, the first year and second year, the anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, labs, yeah, uh, in this building. So at the back here, you can see the hostel for medical students. So uh, content of my lecture, I'm going to give some introduction on um, enhanced laryngeal imaging. Uh, the generic um, term for enhanced laryngeal imaging is chromoendoscopy, yeah, digital chromoendoscopy. And then we are going to talk on clinical application and some case studies. During these case studies, I'm going to ask questions to the residents yeah, for you to describe the endoscopic findings and tell me the differential diagnosis. The resident, the... Um, Di sana mereka ada exam ya untuk jadi specialist. Yes, Prof. Uh, and ada short case kan? Uh, ah, yeah. ya. Ada short there's, case. There's uh. A, uh, some uh, what we call it just like uh, uh, OSCE. We we call it OSCE. Uh, yeah. OSCE. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in Malaysia, um, for their exam, they have um for this exam before they become specialists. Um, they have um, one day theory. So the theory, they have um, writing, essay, long essay and short essay. And they also have um, MC, um, what do you call it, MCQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, for three days, uh, there are exams, clinical exams. So first day of clinical exam is long case which um, they are given uh, 20 minutes uh, to clerk, examine and everything and 30 minutes to present to three to four examiners, present their findings and there will be discussion on the spot. Uh, on the second day is clinic, a short case where they examine uh, in front of three or four examiners. There are five stations, otology, rhinology, uh, laryngology, uh, head and neck, four stations. And they are given seven minutes to do short case. Um, do endoscope, describe findings, and differential diagnosis. And the on the third day of clinical examination, they're given viva. So example, like in this um, lecture, um, when we, we show endoscopic uh, findings, sometimes we show instruments, yeah? the student have to describe the findings and they have to discuss. So each um, table for viva is about 20 minutes. Um, so this is probably uh, the style of VIVA eh, where I'm going to show endoscopic findings again to describe and tell me differential diagnosis. Right, um, for vocal volitions, um, whenever patient have voice disorder uh, and many of them, when you, and you do endoscopic um, examination, you would find mucosolitions. And the mycolitions can be inflammatory or it can be a benign lesion, or it can be pre malignant or malignant lesion. And uh, by now, uh, so far, the gold standard for uh, diagnosing these lesions is by doing direct laryngoscopy and then biopsy confirmed by histopathological examination. However, nowadays, uh, there is a great deal of research being done devoted to improve the quality of images. Hence, 
it may improve the diagnostic capabilities of endoscopy. So what have been done so far, they improve on the zoom lenses, yeah? they include charge couple device technology, they provide brighter light sources, stroboscopic light and so on. So um, this um, concept of vocal, uh, vocal fold imaging is um, relatively new. Okay, so based on this uh, review, uh, these are the uh, example of brands uh, in the market. Yeah? Narrow band imaging, eye scan, uh, optical com, com sorry, I have to, yeah, op optical computed tomography here, yeah? um, confocal microscopy. So these are called vocal fold imaging, which potentially using this vocal fold imaging, it may enhance the diagnosis of laryngeal pathology. And people keep on doing research, maybe in the future, yeah, not now, but maybe in the future, we wouldn't need um, uh, histopathological examination anymore to differentiate or to diagnose uh, some vocal fold lesions. Yeah? Just by doing using vocal fold imaging, we may be able to tell yeah, what are we dealing with. Um, so the recent advances in endoscopic imaging technologies, as I mentioned in the first slide, um, the generic name for vocal fold imaging is high re resolution and digital chromo endoscopy. So these systems are the main aim is to enhance um, any early mucosal lesions, also to enhance the vessels, the subepithelial vessels, because the pattern of the subepithelial vessels may um, tell us what kind of um, what kind of um, um, diagnosis uh, or kind of lesions that we are dealing with. Yeah. So for this digital chromo endoscopy, yeah, the enhanced imaging technology is primarily uh, in two systems. I'm going to mention two kind of systems here. The first system. Um, um, by narrow band imaging, yeah, NBI. Maybe you're all familiar with this narrow band imaging. Um, this is um, a brand normally uh, used by um, Olympus. Uh, this technology used by Olympus brand. It is a pre-process system in which, in this system, um, the white light, uh, the the white light um, spectrum is altered. Yeah. So they they they. Uh, make the bandwidth, um, um, shorten the bandwidth so that when they shorten the bandwidth, um, then the shorter bandwidth will be absorbed by the uh, superficial vessels. So hence, uh, it makes the superficial vessel and subepithelial vessel um, become blue and green light. Yeah? Whenever they, they shorten the, the bandwidth, um, the one from white, when they shorten it, it becomes blue and green light. And this blue and green light is absorbed by the hemoglobin and the vessels in the subepithelial layer so that you can see that the vessels become blue and dark green as seen in this picture. Yeah? This is a picture of respiratory papilloma of the vocal fold. Whereby um, another system uh, utilize post-process uh, technology. Okay, this is utilized by iScan, by Pentax Medical, whereby uh, the white light bandwidth is not modified, but what is modified is the contrast of the white light. Yeah, by increasing the contrast, it enhances uh, the subepithelial vessel. Okay, so as you see here, <clears throat> the color is still uh, red, but you can see the vessels become more enhanced and the mucosal lesions become more enhanced, okay? So this is post-process system. There's no modification of the uh, bandwidth of the white light. Uh, in particularly in eye scan in post-process system, okay, it is, this is considered as a novel technology. I think I mentioned in the previous lecture, uh, this is the only uh, technology that can combine stroboscopy with enhanced imaging or digital chromo endoscopy real time during at the same time. So I'm going to show some uh, examples of this. So um, I, I asked Dr. Arfiza just now what kind of endoscope that, that you used. Yeah? Here, um, the system that I use um, is the iScan. Uh, 
uh, which is in this Pentax uh, medical system, and I use video endoscope. What do we mean by video endoscope? Um, the, the camera is at the tip of endoscope. Okay, some system can utilize, um, can use rigid scope, 70 uh, degree uh, rigid scope to visualize the vocal cords. Yeah, but you can't go really near and some patient wouldn't be able to tolerate. Yeah, with this system, you can go as near as possible. So the current um, recommendation, video endoscope flexible is uh, have better and more advantage yeah, when you examine the larynx. Yeah? Even you can go to the subglottic region when you, are, when you want to see the inferior surface of the vocal cord and you want to see the subglottic region. So why, um, what, how, how can we use the enhanced imaging technology in um, predicting what kind of vocal for lesions that we are seeing? Okay, what is the diagnosis? So by looking at the pattern of the, the vessel, the subepithelial vessels, it may tell us what kind of diagnosis. Yeah? So this guideline on the vascular changes is proposed by the European Laryngological Society. It is published in um, 2016, 2015. So here... <clears throat> Um, in this classification of vascular pattern, they divide into type 1, type 2, 3, and 4 um, type yeah, of vascular pattern. In type 1, the vessels, um, first I'm going to just say this. After, after this, I'm going to show some examples yeah, and some more explanation. In type 1, uh, the vessels are longitudinal. Okay, meaning it is longitudinal to the level of your uh, vocal fold, mucosa. Yeah? It's longitudinal, it's enlarged, mandarin, tortuous, dilated, okay? Um, and um, mark the word here, it is longitudinal, okay? Whereas for type 2, 3 and 4, they are all perpendicular, Okay, there are feeding vessels from the base, yeah, feeding a growth, a water lesion. Okay, in which uh, type two, they normally have a wide angle turning point. So you would see some dot dot dot, yeah, because um, you you see from the surface the tip of the perpendicular vessels, whereas type three you would be able to see symmetric dot lines. Yeah? This is because of the narrow angle turning points. I'm going to show in the next slide, what does it mean? And um, when normally, uh, this is, um, you know, the symmetric dot like loops, it is called IPCL, which is intraepithelial capillary loops. In type four, the vessel become worm-like, yeah? spiral-like. Uh, this normally indicate uh, malignant lesion. So um, here is a diagrammatic um, picture yeah, of a perpendicular vascular changes. Yeah? Remember, in a perpendicular vascular changes, there is a warty lesion, okay? warty growth uh, from on the uh, mucosa of the uh, vocal fold. So what do we mean by perpendicular? This is the uh, main vessel and this is the feeding vessel which grow perpendicularly from the main the original vessel. And as the lesion become more and more warty, you can see you know, the vessel have um, um, narrow uh, turning point and it become more and more spiral. So as I mentioned, the angiogenesis um, um, lead to the growth of intraepithelial papillary capillary loops, IPCL. This is the perpendicular uh, vessel. This is due to epithelial cancero cancerogenic stimulus. And a precancerous lesion, you would be able to see symmetrical arranged dot like loops. This is because um, a lesion that has um, narrow um, turning points from the top, from the surface, you would be able to see a symmetric dots side to side two dots yeah okay like you know i i give example of this uh, patient who has leukoplakia and you see that this patient has symmetric dots two dots side by side yeah in this circle 
And uh, when the lesion become uh, cancerous, become malignant, you would be able to see the vascular loop become worm-like, spiraling. Yeah? As shown in this example, a patient with malignant lesion, can you see that the spiral type of vascular pattern from the surface, this is a perpendicular IPCL that become worm-like. So if you can see this kind of vascular pattern, you can be almost 100% certain that you are dealing with malignant lesion. Maybe not 100% and 90%, you're almost sure that you are dealing. This is an example, another example of malignant lesion. Can you appreciate the spiral type of vessels? Okay, can I have a sip of water? I just um, recovered from COVID about two weeks ago. <laughs> I had bad laryngitis. And after that, I have to give uh, a lot of lectures. Um, lectures, um, in laryngology course in Malaysia. I went to Dubai, uh, give lecture. Just came back on um, Tuesday, Wednesday. And today I'm giving lecture again. Okay, so what are the potential use of enhanced uh, imaging technology? So potentially, when you have this um, video endoscope with uh, enhanced imaging technology, which can enhance the mucosal lesion, enhance the subepithelial vessel, you may be able to differentiate between benign and malignant lesions. Okay, therefore, maybe you can, uh, instead of um, offering two settings of procedure, do, doing direct laryngoscopy first, biopsy, wait for the HPE. Uh, and then come back, do another jar anesthesia for a definitive treatment. You can do two things at one go. Yeah, within one general anesthesia, because you know this is already malignant lesion. You can remove the whole, excise the whole lesion. Therefore, you provide a diagnostic and therapeutic um, component at the same time. It may be also um, able to differentiate between a uh, pre-malignant. Uh, and malignant lesion, and it helps you to map the surgical margins. Yeah? Uh, for example, you are doing transoral laser surgery uh, in a pre-malignant lesion or malignant lesion, then you can map the surgical margin, yeah? how big that you want to excise the tumour. And when you follow up those patients, you, it may help you to detect any recurrence. So you wouldn't wait until the recurrence becomes so big. An early recurrence you can detect. Yeah? And uh, in future, maybe this enhanced technology will help us uh, to see any changes due to acid reflux. And in research, it may, uh, because of the good um, high digital, digital chromo endoscopy, it helped in improving the intra and interrater um, reproducibility. Right, this is a study comparing um, narrow band imaging, which is enhanced imaging, digital chromo endoscopy, and laryngo video stroboscopy. Uh, in narrow band imaging, uh, the video stroboscopy and narrow band imaging cannot be done at the same time. So they have to do narrow band first, and then they change to stroboscope. But then in this study, they compare yeah, how good uh, these two in diagnosing precancerous and malignant lesion. They found that it's quite similar, and they conclude that by having these two, the enhanced technology and video stroboscopy, uh, it would further um, enhance or make your diagnosis more accurate. So it is considered as a complementary tools, recommended complementary tools in evaluating early potential uh, vocal form malignancy. In a, another study in Korea, uh, they use uh, eye scan by Pentax, yeah? and they they investigate uh, the value of eye scan in diagnosing uh, vocal cord lesions, vocal cord leukoplakia. And in this study, they found that by using the eye scan, the abnormal um, vascular changes um, with neoplastic neoangiogenesis, you know, the perpendicular type of vessels, was detected in most cases of malignant lesion. And they found that those cases with severe dysplasia uh, or carcinoma in situ or invasive carcinoma, they depict um, either type 3 or type 4 
um, vascular pattern. And um, so therefore, they conclude that eye scan is a promising uh, diagnostic tool in uh, early detection of laryngeal cancer. So the earlier you detect the lesion, yeah, um, the, uh, the outcome is better okay, in terms of that um, curating the disease, um, um, curing the disease. So now I'm going to show some cases demonstration. This is when we're going to do together, I'm giving lecture as well as I want to get input from you. What do you think? Describe the lesions and what do you think the diagnosis, okay? This is a case number one. The scenario is, uh, this is a young woman uh, who is a non-smoker and she complained of hoarseness for two months. Can I have a volunteer please? <clears throat> Any volunteer? Maybe we can just pick some. Uh, yes, Dr. Arfiza can call the names. <laughs> maybe if Fron, maybe my Fron. Where is Fron? Fron, right? Fron. If Fron, if Fron. If Fron, if Fron. Which one is it? <clears throat> yes, uh, me, Professor. Yeah, I can't see you. Uh, a young woman, uh, she is no smoker. Uh, okay. She okay. has for right. two months. Let, let me play the video. Okay. Let me play the video. All right. Uh, for your information, I muted the, the, the speaker so that you know, there is no voice disrupting us. So whenever um, the vocal cords are approximating, the patient was doing phonation. Yeah? Okay. Okay, Irfan, can you tell me um, the findings that you can see so far? And can you tell me the differential diagnosis? In, this is a patient, young woman. Of in her 30s, um, non smoker, complaint of hoarseness for two months. <clears throat> uh, yes, I will try. Mm -hmm. This uh, this is a uh, 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 type two, bro. Type two, what do you mean? Uh, uh, just describe the lesion and tell uh, me the differential diagnosis. You can you can answer in uh, Indonesia if you'd like to. I can understand. Yes, prof. Uh, that is a uh, ir irregular lesion, prof. Uh, mm -hmm. In the right focal fold. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and more vessel, prof. More vessel, okay. So, what uh, do you think the vocal cords are mobile or immobile? Uh, I think uh. Uh, there is a mobile prof. Uh, I think it's the pre-malignance uh, lesion prof uh, okay. for the right uh, focal fold. Okay, so you think, so when you're describing uh, laryngeal findings, number one, it's important for you to tell the examiner whether the vocal cords are mobile or not. Okay, and uh, number two, you describe the lesions that you see, right? So you're correct, there is lesion on the right vocal fold. Can you tell me the lesion, which part of the vocal fold on the right side that has the lesion? Is it uh, anterior uh, to third? In the, in the, in the uh, uh, right vocal fold, in the medial to posterior. 
Okay, so it involves the whole length of the vocal fold, yeah, from anterior one third until the posterior one third uh, of the vocal fold. Okay, so your uh, provisional diagnosis, you think this is a pre malignant lesion. Okay, any differential diagnosis? Uh, uh, for the differential diagnosis is uh, papillo papilloma, bro. Papilloma. Okay. Any other differential diagnosis? Uh, uh, for the differential diagnosis is other. Uh, uh, is uh, laryngopharyngeal reflux, bro. Okay, laryngopharyngeal reflux. Any other differential diagnosis? Uh, laryngitis, prof. Laryngitis, okay. So now I'm going to play for that, you're fine. Yeah. So now for everyone, you see that um, the irregular lesion become more marked Yeah. when I turn on the eye scan. This is what we call enhanced imaging. Yeah. It enhances the, the, the mucosa, the mucosal lesion, all right? And also it enhanced the subepithelial vessel. So as you can see here, you don't see uh, any marked um, perpendicular vessels. All right. What you can see that is erythematous, erythematous, and irregular lesion. And now, if I'm, I'm going to turn on, this is on eye scan three. Okay. Now this is a stroboscope. Yeah. Can you tell me the stroboscope findings? Uh, what we learned from uh, the previous um, lecture, when you see a stroboscope, number one, you need to see whether uh, the waves, the mucosal waves are symmetrical or not. Okay, uh, and is not. there any area which is non-vibrating? What do you think is fine? Um, yes, Prof. Uh, it's uh, not uh, symmetrical. Not and, symmetrical? Yeah, and mm -hmm. not completely closure. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, no vibration to uh, in the anterior uh, to posterior prof. Which side? On the right side, right? In yeah. the right side, prof. Yeah. In the right uh, side, uh, the for right side. Yes, okay, good, Irfan. So Irfan have pointed out uh, the findings correctly. It's on the right vocal fold, the whole length, okay. Uh, there's absence of uh, perpendicular vessels, and then um, there's a non-vibrating segment, all right? You are right if you want to say uh, a differential diagnosis of pre-malignant lesion. But then uh, if I were you, I wouldn't put it first because we are dealing with a young woman and she's a non-smoker. She doesn't have predisposing factor for malignancy. And the hostess is just uh, is, is too much. It's chronic though. So I would think of um, a chronic infection first like um, tuberculous laryngitis, okay? Um, and um, you can think about laryngopharyngeal reflux, and then only you think about pre-malignant lesion or a malignant lesion, okay? Yes. So um, here, yep, this is the findings that Irfan had mentioned. So uh, this patient, um, my provision diagnosis at that time was uh, tuberculous laryngitis. So the patient had undergone uh, endolaryngeal microsurgery, uh, incision biopsy with precision technique, yeah, just take a, a little bit of the mucosa um, and uh, careful not to injure the vocal ligament. Because if it is a chronic infection with treatment, it can improve and the patient may get back her voice. Yeah. And um, the biopsy specimen was sent for investigation. You can send, Irfan, can you tell me uh, what are the investigation for tuberculosis? Uh, for 
Uh, yes, Prof. So, uh, in the tuberculosis laryngitis, we found the uh, most bite lesion, Prof. Uh, yes, that is the endoscopic uh, findings. But when you get, you have the specimen, let's say you have done the biopsy, uh, what investigation you would like to request to confirm that this is a tuberculous laryngitis? So, uh, in this patient, the, the chest x-ray is normal. The only pathology is on the vocal fold. Okay. She doesn't have um, any cough. She doesn't have any sputum. Okay. The only specimen we have is from the vocal fold. So now you have the biopsy specimen. Okay. Okay. What investigation you would like to request? Uh, in the uh, biopsy, uh, we found the uh, cell of uh, Langer Hansprof. So meaning you want to send for histopathological examination? Yes, Prof. Okay. So in a HPE, what would you see in a tuberculosis other than Lan Heng? Uh, what is the keyword on the HPE for a tuberculosis? Uh, for the tuberculosis, uh, uh, we can found the uh, uh, langer Hans cell, Prof. Is it a caseating or non-caseating granulometer lesion? Oh. Uh, it's caseating, yeah? It's, it's a caseating uh, granulometer lesion, which you have to read up. Yeah? In a granulometer lesion, not only lang hand joint cell, there are other cells that you can see which uh, is typical of a, a caseating type of granulomatous uh, lesion. Uh, are there investigations? Uh, yes, Prof. To... Any other investigations? Investigation to... Uh, gen expert, Prof. <laughs> gen expert is what I've, I'm written oh, here. Yes. So this is not available oh. in all center. This is what I'm going to tell you. But at your level, residence level, yeah, general level, what common oh. investigation that we send for tuberculosis? Uh, the uh, we we check the uh. Uh, radiology prof. Uh, from uh, uh yes, chest X-ray uh, normal. Okay. X-ray. So what I want you to answer to tell me the biopsy specimen. You can send for for acid fast bacilli. You can send for culture sens sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is the name of the uh staining? We uh we check uh, the, uh for the. Zil BTA prof for the secret uh, for the bit, uh, uh, check BTA prof. Yeah, Zil Nissen staining. Zil Nissen. Okay, then you can culture in Lowenstein uh, media, yeah, for culture. Yeah, and then uh, if you have in your hospital, you can send for PCR because even you get a small number of um, um, microbacterium tuberculosis in your specimen, the PCR can replicate and can show the presence of the um, bacteria. Okay, there's another way of doing PCR, um, which has certain advantage. It is called gene expert. Yeah, gene expert is another way of doing PCR. Uh, the difference is, uh, gene expert, it gives a result with, uh, within 24 hours, very quick. Yeah? You get the results. And at the same time, the gene expert uh, test will tell you whether or not um, the, the bacteria, the microbacterium you are dealing with is sensitive or resistant to rifampicin yeah? treatment for tuberculosis. So in this patient, the gene expert is positive and she was um, treated with um, anti-tuberculosis. Okay, and this is the endoscopic findings one month after the treatment. Okay. Now, the irregular lesion that Irfan had described almost disappear, disappear but you still can see some erythematous uh, mucosa. And uh, on eye scan, the enhanced imaging, you can see that the irregular lesion 
less and then on stroboscopy there is return of mucosal wave but it is not normal yet yeah the amplitude is reduced it is still asymmetrical but now it from non vibrating now it become vibrating okay so how long do you would you want to continue anti tuberculosis if uh, for 6 months bro yes 6 months yeah sometimes in extra pulmonary tb um, we also can continue up to 9 months yeah mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good, Irfan. So we go to the next case. Okay. Any you, question Paul. about this case, Irfan, that you're not sure? Maybe enough. Paul. Enough. <laughs> so Dr. Afiz, uh, Irfan, in your final year? No, Prof. Uh, yeah. Just uh, the uh, middle. <laughs> okay, maybe we can call out the final year residents. Okay. Okay, bro. Maybe this is too advanced for them. Okay, so we have another case. Can we have a, a volunteer? <clears throat> hey, Dr. No, Afiza, <laughs> maybe you want to call, uh, call their name, not volunteer, sorry. Uh, maybe Nur Halima, Prof. Nur Halima, beautiful name. <laughs> Nur Halima. Is Nur Halima there? Still mute, maybe Nur Halima. Can I see you? Okay. Yes, bro. Where's Nur Halima? I can't see her. Okay, there you are. So, Nur Halima. Um, now we are, I'm showing a video, larynx, of a patient, 40-year-old male, a chronic smoker, also uh, worked as a contractor. He used his voice a lot at the work field. This endoscopic uh, is on an uh, eye scan, yeah, on enhanced imaging. Uh, can you tell me the findings and uh, the differential diagnosis? There is a mask in the mask in lab. Okay, you ready? Ready. Can you tell me? There is a mask in the lab. Uh, uh, left vocal cord. Okay, there is mass on the left vocal cord. Here, you mean here, right? Yes. Okay. Anything else you want to add? The findings? There is a discharge. Hmm? Mm. Uh, there is um, vascular, hy hypervascular, and hypervascular. Okay. Anything mm. else? Mm -mm -mm. So Halima, do you think that the 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 pathology is only on the left vocal fold, or is it uh, both on the left and also on the right vocal fold? Mm -hmm. Is there uh is the left the right vocal fold normal? Uh, no, uh, in um, okay. right and left, uh, not normal, bro. Okay, so if the right is not normal, how do you describe uh, the lesion on the right side? Um, the <coughs> hypervascular and... Okay, uh, so maybe you want to tell me. Lesion. Sorry, there is irregular lesion in uh in the left at the right side. Okay, and what you want to point out is the patient has leukoplakia patch. Yes, yeah, yes. whitish lesion. 
Leukoplakia is a macroscopic, not micro, eh, macroscopic uh, description. When you see a lesion uh, with whitish um, surface like this, you can say that it's a leukoplakic lesion yeah, on the opposite side. And what else you want you need to point out is the, the mass look like lobulated, yeah. Uh, and some one lobu lobulated mass um, at the middle part of the vocal fold looks smooth, mm -hmm. and the anterior part, which is obscuring the anterior commissure, looks irregular with a uh, whitish surface. Okay, so that's how you describe. And please do not uh, miss the opposite side. Yeah? You can see that it's also a superficial uh, lesion. Yeah? Not as big as this, lobulated. A superficial lesion with a leukoplakia, yeah? whitish lesion on the opposite side of the vocal fold. So with this scenario and these findings, excuse me. Yes. Oh. Okay, with this scenario and these findings, uh, can you tell me your provisional and differential diagnosis? Um, differential diagnosis, um, um, uh, pre-cancer, pre-cancer lesion. Pre-cancer lesion. Any other diagnosis? Um, Pre-malignant lesion of cancer. What is the difference between pre-cancer and pre-malignant? Is it the same or different? Uh, papi, uh, papilomatous scarring. Papilomatous scarring. Okay, anything else? Um, Would you consider glottic malignancy? So one is a pre-malignant lesion, another one is malignant, right? In a smoker, okay, uh, male, okay. Uh, so you would be thinking of glottic malignancy as well, cancerous lesion, okay. And uh, I wouldn't uh, put recurrent respiratory papillomatosis here. Because uh, recurrent respiratory papillomatosis, which I'm going to show in uh, other slides, uh, it has uh, quite a typical of um, perpendicular vessel dots. Yeah, We call it punctate hemorrhage. And the mucosa is normally irregular. Okay, This one looks um, smooth on one side and the other side with um, whitish um, lesion overlying the mass. Okay. So, um, in um, my view, when I see this patient, uh, of course, the differential diagnosis of glottic malignancy was told to the patient. But, but in my mind, I'm thinking of um, vocal hemorrhagic uh, polyp as well, telangiectatic polyp, yeah, because of the vascular pattern. Okay, this is the point of the lecture. With, with eye scan, uh, with a digital chromo endoscopy, or maybe you don't have eye scan, you have NBI, you can see this vessel, which is tortuous, mandarin, ectatic vessels. Yeah. And um, so, sorry. Why oh, cannot move? All right. Right, so this is a paper that uh, been proposed by the ELS, the one that I mentioned about vascular pattern. This is type one vascular pattern. Yeah, uh, for example, given in the paper, um, the asterisk shows um, a tactic vessel, yeah, enlarged vessel. The this one shows um, mid media, it like um, tortuous. Yeah, and a uh, hash. This one shows. Can you see the direction of the vessel is is not longitudinal, it is horizontal. Yeah, it changes the direction of a normal direction of vessel. And uh, the open circle shows um, enlarged branch yeah, from the, um, the ectatic vessel over here. But you don't see any warty lesion. You see this lesion, the, the vessels all is longitudinal on the mucosa or the vocal fold. 
So you can uh, think of a benign lesion if you see this kind of vascular pattern. So as what we saw in this patient, this is a type 1 vascular pattern. Okay. Of course, uh, back uh, uh, at the back of your mind, you want to think of this one as um, either pre-malignant or malignant lesion. Okay, so that was being told to the patient. But you know, my provision diagnosis that time it was um, hemorrhagic uh, telangiectatic polyp. So if um, your uh, what would what would be your management, um, Halima, in this patient? After you have seen this, you know this is these are your differential diagnosis. Okay, um, what would you do next? Do uh, biopsy mean biopsy? Okay, what type of biopsy you would do? Is it an incisional biopsy or excisional biopsy? Um, incisional biopsy. Okay. Excisional biopsy. Sorry. Excisional biopsy. Excisional biopsy, okay, meaning you are going to remove the whole mass uh, for biopsy. Okay, what instrument, what is the procedure What would that you would do? Instrument. So in this case, uh, because one of the differential diagnoses is also um, telangiectatic polyp, polyp, okay, then uh, you would be thinking of doing endolaryngeal microsurgery, okay, with precision technique, right? Uh, you wouldn't want to destroy uh, the vocal fold of the patient. You don't want to destroy the vocal ligament. So you need endolaryngeal microsurgery, okay? So this is the patient uh, under general anesthesia. Endolaryngeal microsurgery, direct laryngoscope is suspended at the vellicular. And you can see this is the right vocal fold and this is the left vocal fold. Now under general anesthesia, you can see this clearly. Would you be thinking of um, carcinoma now? It looks more like a polyp, right? Okay. And what about the opposite side? It looks like very subtle. Okay. So normally in this kind of case, when you see a huge mass, uh, most probably a vocal polyp with um, some superficial lesion on the opposite side. Normally, the opposite side, the superficial lesion is a reactive lesion. Okay, because of when a patient speak, cough or swallowing, the mass rub the opposite vocal fold. Okay, so um, what do I mean by precision technique? You need to raise a flap. Yeah, uh, do um, use cold instrument. You can uh, raise flap medium mucosal flap like this and uh, remove the, uh, the abnormal mucosa. Yeah, by definition, uh, vocal polyp is protrusion of um, edematous mucosa. Yeah? So the mucosa is abnormal. So you remove the mucosa together with a gelatinous uh, material that is collected in the submucosal region. And you maintain, you... Um, prevent any injury to the vocal ligament. You have to you have to use microscope, high magnification, and use a correct instrument if you want to do this. Okay. And then um, you put the flap back. Tell the patient to raise the voice. Okay. Uh, for five days, uh, give prophylaxis uh, of a proton pump inhibitor. Voice rest for five days, and then give. If patient is a professional voice user of high demand, high voice demand, okay, uh, give a patient a long uh, MC. In Malaysia, it's called MC. I don't know in Indonesia what do you call it, medical certificate, so that the patient can rest from doing their job for certain duration. Yeah, And this is uh, the patient's larynx, um, five months after surgery. Okay, You can see that I didn't do anything on the opposite side. Yeah because I think that was a reactive lesion and it disappeared by itself. Yeah, whenever you have removed the, the part that uh, been irritating the opposite side. Yeah? This is the side where the polyp was. Okay, This is on eye scan. On eye scan, you can see there's some changes on the mucosa, probably um, because of huge polyp and surgery, there is some scar. Okay, probably. 
two. This is on eye scan two, eye scan three, and this is on a stroboscope. So Halima, what do you think of the stroboscopic findings of this patient? What do you think? The, is the mucosal wave symmetrical? Do you see the, the amplitude normal bilaterally? Is there any non-vibrating segment? Of course, there is thick mucus yeah, on the glottic region. Uh, there is a total closure and symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the mucosal wave looks symmetrical, right? But people who have been using stroboscopy a lot would say that there is slight reduced amplitude on the side. Yeah, maybe there is little scar occurred yeah, uh, as a consequence of um, long-standing polyp and also the surgery. <coughs> yeah, however, there is no non-vibrating segment and the patient happy with the voice. Okay, mm -hmm. so now you understand yeah, the, if you have a good instrument, you examine, you bring the scope very near to the patient, you may be able to predict. Yeah, If you think this is a, a cancer, right, and you remove um, the, 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 the lesion, like you remove a cancer with surgical margin, you would destroy the patient's voice. Of course, you would treat, there wouldn't be any lesion, but the voice wouldn't be um, as good. Yeah, There would be a lot of more scarring yeah, when you touch the vocal ligament. Okay, Halima, you have any question about this? Um, there is enough. Okay, any uh, for other residents, you have any question, please put on the chat box. Yeah? We can answer the questions. Thank you. Okay, for... welcome. Good job, Halima. So we go on the next slide. Okay, case number three. Can we, Dr. Arfiza, can we call the next residents? Yeah, Prof. Uh... <laughs> Elfidi Shah, maybe Prof. Elfidi. Disha, Disha. 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 Miss Disha. <coughs> Is she here? He or she? She, Prof. He. Uh, she, she. She. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> Not responding. Maybe at the. Uh, maybe Reyes, maybe. Reyes, yeah. No? Where's the, where's the resident? <laughs> you know, okay, maybe, uh, we have 110 people here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, um, it's all right to make mistake. We are doing some discussion, you know, when I go to the international uh, conferences and become panel discussion, I do make mistake as well. Whenever they show cases and they ask opinion from the panel, sometimes I do mistake as well. So it's right, it is okay to make mistakes. We are all learning. And uh, if you answer, uh, you try, it will register in your mind a lot better than others. Maybe Benny, Benny, here. I just put some uh, senior resident prof, so I just yeah. put the pick. Yes, yes, prof. Okay, ah, hey, Benny. Hello, Benny. Okay, yes, prof. Uh, I have this uh, video. Have a look, yeah? Yes, prof. He is a male, um, 40 year old, a chronic smoker, complaint of hoarseness for three months.
Okay. Can you tell me the findings? Also, the differential diagnosis. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, from the video, I see the mass from the uh, supraglottis. Uh, and I know this uh, is uh, maybe malignant lesion, Prof. And okay. the uh, vocal cord, I see the vocal cord is not uh, symmetric. Mm -hmm. And then the <clears throat> vessel, okay. and is the I see the vessel uh, type step four. Uh, Maybe okay. Problem. All right. Yeah, um, Benny, thank you. A good try. Okay. So Benny, correct. There is a mass, and he predict that the mass in supraglottic region. I why you say that the mass in the supraglottic region? Uh, because uh, the mass because look, looks the... pedunculated. Uh, and, yes, uh, yes. Um, so uh, correct. What is your uh, provisional and differential diagnosis? The 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 diagnosis is uh, laryngitis uh, tumor. Mm -hmm. Any so, differential? Tumor, and then uh, maybe. Okay, never mind. So yes, uh, a man who is a chronic smoker with a lesion like this, you may want to think about glottic malignancy. Uh, but then with this uh, technology, okay, you can see that uh, you know from here, one look, you look, it looks like the mass from the anterior commissure, isn't it? Yeah, looks like from anterior commissure. But unfortunately, because the mass is covered by uh, leukoplakia, which normally leukoplakia on histopathological examination would show hyperkeratosis or parakeratosis. This is the limitation. You wouldn't be able to see the vascular pattern in the subepithelial layer because of this whitish lesion. Okay. Yes. But then what you can tell that this mass is not exactly at the anterior commission as Benny has predicted because on a, uh, on a, when the patient is phonating, you can see that the vocal, the mass is pedunculated and the patient managed to close the gap. Huh? Yeah. And you can see there is a um, mucosal wave. All right. I'm going to show in other slide a firm mass which impede a closure uh, between the two vocal folds and you can see gap. In here, you can see a, the patient can close the gap. There is mucosal wave and the mass kind of pop upward yeah, whenever the patient uh, phonate. Yeah? So um, the thick keratosis uh, obscure the vascular pattern. Okay, you are right if you think about glottic malignancy because of the patient has a, a risk factor, a male. Okay, but then another uh, differential diagnosis is the lanjectatic polyp. Looking at the nature, the pedang, the, uh, the, um, the, the mass look like um, floppy here yeah? it can goes up and down and patient can close the phonetary gap so i did uh, endolaryngeal microsurgery and it's confirmed under ga that there is um stock yeah uh, which come from the uh, ventricle um, of the patient okay and uh, it is confirmed to be telangiectatic polyp okay so this is um how you know when you have you examine properly, uh, you can predict what is the diagnosis. Uh, okay, you wouldn't uh, put your uh, glottic malignancy as first. Yeah, uh, you also would also think of vocal cord polyp, uh, telangiectatic polyp when you see this kind of mass. Okay, case okay, number Prof, four. Thank you, Prof. Yeah, thank you, Benny. Good try. Someone scribble my my slide. <laughs> I don't know who. 
uh, it's not me, someone uh, in the cloud yeah, from Indonesia scribble, yes, now disappear. <laughs> so Dr. Arfiza, can we call the next residence? Okay, Prof. <clears throat> mm, okay, we'll see. Uh, maybe Alfonso. Alfonso. Yeah, okay, Prof. Alfonso. Where is Alfonso? Here, yeah, Prof. Okay. Hi, Alfonso. Um, see this video. Now, this is a stroboscope with iScan3. This is what I said you can do um, with this technology. You can do stroboscope together with uh, digital chromo endoscopy in real time. Okay, Alfonso, what do you think the findings and what are the differential diagnosis? Um, I think there is a symmetrical, uh, asymmetrical focal cord, Prof. And there is a lesion in the third anterior mm -hmm. vocal cord, mm -hmm. uh, both vocal cord. Prop. Both vocal cord, very good. So on the both vocal cord, which part? Uh, anterior, middle? Third part anterior. Okay, good. All right. And on stroboscopy, you said that the mucosal wave are asymmetrical. Symmetrical, prop. Okay. And is there any non-vibrating segment? Uh, there is. So I tell you, there is, uh, if you observe carefully, this yeah. part, there is yep. no vibration. Com you, you compare this leukoplakia and that leukoplakia. Okay, the on the left side is not vibrating. Can you see that? Whereas on the right side, you can see nicely like a curtain effect. Yeah, okay. Prof. And um, do you see the vascular pattern? Yeah, the vascular pattern, dot, dot vascular pattern, Prof. Dot. Type 2, 3 or 4? Type 3. Type 3, okay. Correct. So, um, here... Uh, in the earlier part, you can see that I gave um, laryngeal gargle. Yeah, use a long nozzle and spray the supraglottis and glottis to give um, adequate upper airway anesthesia so that you can bring your endoscope very close uh, to the vocal fold to the lesion for you to examine. You cannot examine the vascular pattern if the tip of the endoscope is far at the epiglottis, supraglottic region. It has to be as near as possible. And Benny is correct, yeah? There's leukoplakia on both vocal folds. There's non-vibrating segment on the um, left vocal fold, okay? So what do you think of the uh, diagnosis? Diagnosis. Um, Maybe so, pre-malignancy, pre prop. Yes, a pre-malignant lesion, okay, uh, with a differential diagnosis of glottic malignancy. Okay, yeah, so can you tell me the spectrum of pre-malignant lesion? Uh, spectrum. On histopathological examination. Okay, on histopathological examination, it range from hyperplasia, um, hyperkeratosis, dysplasia, in which dysplasia, they divide further into mild, moderate, severe, or some pathologies divide them into high-grade and low-grade dysplasia. Okay? And from dysplasia, it becomes carcinoma in situ. 
Is carcinoma in situ a malignant tumor or a pre-malignant tumor? Maybe this in this case is this dysplasia prof. Uh, yes. Carcin when the, the the term is carcinoma in situ, it means that it is still a pre-malignant, yeah, but prof. it's almost going to be a malignant. So once the tumor cells invade the basement membrane, it becomes invasive carcinoma. So carcinoma in situ, when you can see abnormal uh, cells, this plastic cell on the, the whole uh, length, the whole depth of the epithelium. Okay, but without bridging, uh, invade, invading the basement membrane. Okay. Good All right. So in this patient, uh, we suspect that he, uh, the patient has a precancerous lesion. So we did um, transoral laser microsurgery with a type 1 subepithelial uh, cordectomy using laser. I think there will be um, another lecture on uh, early glutic carcinoma and transoral laser surgery. Okay. And we did excision. Okay. Remove the whole thing, type 1. And the HPE confirmed to be high grade dysplasia. So Benny, Benny, you are Benny Alfonso, or Alfonso, Alfonso? Alfonso, sorry, Alfonso, correct? Yeah, he was thinking of a pre malignant. So now it is confirmed by the histopathological examination. So remember that in a pre malignant lesion, there is a spectrum from the mildest form, which is hyperplasia, hyperkeratosis, to dysplasia, low grade dysplasia high grade dysplasia carcinoma in situ okay whenever the basement membrane is breached it become malignant invasive carcinoma okay it's not pre malignant anymore thank you alfonso very good assalamualaikum prof assalamualaikum salam next case <coughs> can we have next resident Yes, Prof. Wait, uh, I just want to see who is in the. Uh, maybe Seba. Seba. Yes, Doctor. Yes, Prof. Okay. Sheba. Hello, yes, Sheba. Yes, Prof. Um, so this is the video. Have a look. Again, I give um, laryngeal goggle. Okay, so that I can bring the endoscope. <clears throat> so can you tell me the findings? We use white light first, yeah? Can you tell me the findings? Uh, yes, Prof. Uh, I see almost no uh, movement. No movement. Have a look no. from the beginning. Yeah. Is that no movement? Uh, yes, Prof. There is movement, irregular movement. Uh, so, so both vocal cords are mobile. And? Yes. And um, hypervascularization, and there is a mass, irregular mass, mm -hmm. on the left side of the focal cord. And mm -hmm. um, I see um, leukoplakia or uh, thick mucus from the left side, bro. Okay, right. What yeah. do you think of the vascular pattern? When I turn on the eye scan, this is on eye scan yeah. one. What do you think I, of the vascular pattern? I think what it's type? A type 2, bro. Type 2. Okay. What is type 2? Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's a type yeah. 4, bro. Type 4. Why do you say it is type 4? Because it's a white... Um, I'm sorry, bro. Because it is worm-like. Can you see the spiral? 
spiral vessel. It's a, a mm. like yeah. a worm, like yeah. worm, worm so like. It is type four, yeah. Yes, bro. See that? Okay. And yes, now I turn on the stroboscopy. This is for the. It's very near to the vocal fold, yeah. Turn on the stroboscopy. Stroboscopy with eye scan one. What can you see? Uh, it's a no movement in the left side focal cord, bro. You mean no mucosal wave? Yes, bro. No mucosal yes. wave. The vocal cords are mobile, but during phonation, there is no mucosal wave on the tumor side, on the mass side, on the left side. Is there any vibration on the opposite side, on the right vocal fold? Mm, could you please uh, like repeat the video, bro? Uh, yes, there is a movement. Uh, okay. Still fibrous in the right side, bro. Right. So what is your diagnosis? A malignant tumor on the left focal cord. Bro. Correct. Yeah. So if you see this, you cannot give a diagnosis of pre-malignant lesion anymore. Yeah. This is very staring that we are dealing with a <coughs> malignant tumor. Number one is the vascular pattern. Okay. Number two, you know, uh, on stroboscopy, it clearly it's not vibrating at all. Yeah, it shows that the tumor has gone deeper into the vocal ligament. So that's why that's why there is no vibration at all. So um, there is fungating mass. So that is on white light on eye scan one. You can see the vascular pattern. This is type four, and this patient. If you see this case, okay, how would you treat? Uh, this case, a patient with a mass on the uh, left side of the vocal fold, vocal cords are mobile. How would you treat? How would you manage? And um, you think this is malignant tumor? Uh, first, we do the biopsy, and then if uh, the biopsy confirm it's malignancy, mm -hmm. so we did the lary laryngectomy. Laryngectomy. So, um, what is the staging of the tumor now? Um, the vocal cords are mobile and there is mass uh, at the vocal fold. There is no involvement of the false cord mm -hmm. and there is no erosion of the inner cartilage. What is the staging? Um, okay, never mind. Maybe that is another lecture. <laughs> what I want to tell you is uh, in this patient, the staging is um, um, the staging is T two because it has involved the ventricle. Okay, the false cord over this region. Okay, and um, because we are sure that um, the tumor is malignant, so I did uh, diagnostic and endoscopic at the same sitting. So I didn't do two things uh, with uh, at different time. Okay. So meaning you are you are not wrong at all. If you want to put patient under GA, biopsy, get the HPE first and plan what you want to do. Yeah, if you are dealing with early glottic carcinoma, you may want to think either radiotherapy or transoral laser surgery. But in my center, because we are sure that I'm sure that this is malignant tumor, I didn't do biopsy, I did straight away diagnostic and therapeutic. Yeah. So we did uh, type six, sorry, type five A uh, cordectomy. Okay. And the HPE confirmed squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. So from the specimen after we have done the excision, we sent to the lab. Okay, this one we remove the false cord as well. Maybe we talk in the next lecture about the type of cordectomy. And this is the patient's vocal fold. One month uh, post um, transoral laser surgery. You can see scar over here and there's granuloma. There's another video which I didn't put here. Uh, 12 months uh, post-surgery, the granuloma is no more there and the patient is well. Okay. 
So this is how the uh, technology help you to diagnose. Yeah. So potentially, if this become the technology become more and more, maybe, maybe in the future we don't need HPE. Okay. But for now, for your level, you want to become specialist. Getting the diagnosis, getting the HPE is very important. Yeah. Before you you plan what you want to do with the patient. Okay. So you must know how to stage. Yeah, according to AGCC classification, how to stage and what are the treatment options. Okay, Shiba. Thank you. Okay. Very good, Shiba. Very Thank good you. Job. Good job. Okay, we go to the next case. Dr. Arfiza, can we have the next one? Yeah, okay, Prof. Um... Before that, Shiba, do you have any question? Is that clear to you about this case? Uh, for now, I'm clear, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Okay, okay. thank you. Dr. Arfiza? <coughs> okay, so, prof. hopefully, residents, um, jangan confuse ya yeah, dengan ni. Uh, uh, kalau ada confusion about my lecture, please ask. Oh, uh, maybe Lucas, Lucas, Rob, Lucas. Lucas, mana Lucas? Oh, Lucas, mana Lucas? Ah. Yes, bro. Okay, Lucas, this is the video. Sekejap ya. Okay, Lucas. Sorry, sorry. This urgent thing that I need to send. Okay, so this is the video. A patient. Um, what did I write there? Um, okay. So this patient uh, is diagnosed to have um, recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. Okay. Yes, bro. And he had undergone uh, debulking three times in other center. Can you please describe the uh, endoscopic findings? Uh, we can find the irregular mass in the posterior of the focal cord. Bro. Mm -hmm. Posterior or anterior? <coughs> so anterior, but I'm okay. sorry. Okay, mass. Right or left? Mm. From the, maybe from the right, bro. From the right, okay. What else do you see? What about the mobility of the vocal fold? Yeah. Is the vocal fold mobile, right and left? Yes, mobile, bro. It's mobile. What do you think of the vascular pattern? Yes, bro. What do you think of the vascular pattern, the type of vascular pattern? Now we turn on, this is on I scan 2, I scan 3. Is it type 1, type 2, 3, 4? Maybe the mm -hmm. fourth, the type 3, 4. Mm -hmm. type, type 3, okay. And what do you think of the stroboscopic findings? From the stroboscopic, 
uh, asymmetric smooth of curve. Asymmetrical. What else? What What do you think of the closure of the fonatory gap mm -hmm. of the glottis? Mm -hmm. Not complete and uh, closure. No. Yes, incomplete closure. So this is an example of a firm mass. Yeah, compared to the previous um a case where whenever the patient phonate, the patient can close the glottis, and the the pedunculated mass can plop flop upward okay but this mass is a firm mass okay so do you think this patient has uh, rrp yes prof you think this patient has rrp okay so i would like to defer number one uh the mucosa is too irregular with you know some whitish um, discoloration over here okay which is not common in rrp and another thing is when you uh, turn on the um, eye scan, you observe the vascular pattern. Yeah? This is a spiral type spiral. It's not uh, type 3. Type 3 is symmetric dots. You can see one darker, one um, another one is lighter dot side to side. Yeah? But this one, you can see the spiral. Okay, So we think that this patient has malignant transformation of RRP. So I'm going to show in the next slide, Lucas. Okay. Now, this is a typical findings of RRP. Okay, can you see uh, the mucosa of RRP? Normally, it doesn't have a leukoplakic patch. Yes, Prof. Yeah. And then you see the dot yeah symmetric dot side by side yeah whereas in a malignant transformation you can see this this is not normal for rrp okay and um also you can see the type 4 vascular pattern and on stroboscopic examination you can appreciate that this mass is firm Okay, it, it impedes the closure of the glottis yeah, until you can see gap uh, and there's reduced amplitude on the side of the mass. So we have um, sand biopsy of this. It's turned out to be malignant uh, squamous cell carcinoma. So meaning it's a malignant transformation of recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. Okay, so what are you going to do, Lucas? A mass like this. Vocal cords mobile, biopsy, squamous cell carcinoma. So maybe that's too much for today. <laughs> There's another lecture on a uh, glottic carcinoma. All right. So um, for this, the vocal cords are still mobile. Okay. So this patient had um, undergone a transoral laser chordectomy. Okay. Type 5A. Um, and this is two months uh, after surgery. What do you think of this, Lucas? Two months after surgery. How do you describe this? Um, this is still the lesion, bro. Okay. Uh, how would you describe? Is it irregular? Like... Regular, uh, it is smooth, isn't it? It is a um a, a round lesion, yeah, a round lesion with smooth surface. Okay, and yes, you don't see uh, perpendicular vessels here, so there's high chance that this is a granuloma because when we did surgery, we exposed the cartilage over here, and uh, the biopsy confirmed to be granuloma, right? And this is the patient nine months after surgery. Okay, so there's a loss of um, um, soft tissue there because we did the surgery right until the cartilage, and now there's an epithelium overlying the cartilage. All right, Lucas, good try, good job. Uh, can we have a last one? I think this is the last one. Another resident. 
Okay, Prof. I'll mm. see. Uh... So now, um, hopefully everyone can appreciate RRP. Yeah? RRP, whenever you do short case, the moment you see RRP, you know that this is RRP. Yeah, normally, it wouldn't be on just one side. Normally, that it has multiple sides sometimes uh, and it is quite common uh, not only vocal, true vocal fold, it involves the false vocal fold as well and you can see the punctate hemorrhage, the um, uh, type 2 vascular pattern, yeah? the dot, 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 yeah? because the perpendicular vessel but not yet tumor, not yet cancer, malignant lesion. You would suspect malignant transformation of RRP whenever you see the mucosa has changed, yeah, has some changes like um, um, uh, there's leukoplakia, okay, some discoloration, and the vascular bit pattern is not a simple typical of dot dot anymore. It has a spiral type of vessel, okay. Now next case, next resident. Mimi Dana, Prof. Dana Arwanda. Um, yeah, Dana Arwanda. Can I see this? Okay. Dana. Prof. Is Dana. Yes. I just, I, I just want you to describe, yeah? Describe these findings. These endoscopic findings. Okay, can you describe for me the endoscopic findings? Um, I see. Uh, um, what? Um, I think maybe the connection on the other on the left vocal cord, on the thing the antisuran or aguatic. The connection is not good, and eh, Dr. Alfiza. Yeah, the connection is not good. Then uh, uh, should we select an, uh, another? Uh, yes. Prof. yes, yes, please. Maybe Dana. Uh, yes. Yes, Prof. Maybe not the participation, uh, Dana, because your connection is not really good. Uh, let me see. Uh, Uh, your regulation on maybe Vicky Hillman. Yes, Prof. Vicky. Uh, there is uh, irregular mass uh, and fixation the focal cord, uh, left focal cord, uh, and also uh, there's still uh, irregular. Shape in the left focal cord, uh, according to Ms. Prof. Okay, so very good, Fikri. Fikri mentioned about fixation of the left vocal cord, and that's irregular mass. The irre can you specifically tell me um, um, the subset of uh, irregular mass, subset of the larynx? Uh, uh, I think it's, it, it it came from glottis and div, uh, and widening to the Supraglottis, Prof. Yes. What about the subglottis? Mm. Yes, there is a, a widening to subglottis too, Prof. Yes, there's minimal involvement of the subglottis. Yeah. And there's involvement of supraglottis as well. It looks like the ventricle, um, the false cord is involved. Yeah. And uh, this, if you see this, if you don't diagnose this as a glottic uh, carcinoma, something wrong with you. Okay, so it has to be glottic carcinoma until proven otherwise. And um, see that when you bring the scope very near, 
there's a lot of things that you can learn from here. So at least what do you think the staging of the this patient? Uh, if we didn't find the nodule enhancement, we think the stadium too, Prof. Yeah, it could be T2 uh, because the vocal cord um, is not totally fixed. Yeah? Look at this. It is, um, there is reduced mobility. Yeah, so it's not totally fixed and it has involved the false cord as well. So uh, the diagnosis, um, glottic, glottic CA, at least T2. Okay, and you need to confirm this with radiological imaging. And the radiological imaging um, says that there is involvement of the uh, paraglottic space, yeah, anterior paraglottic space. So um, it does not involve the, just the anterior part, but it does not involve the inner part of the um, cartilage. So we're going to discuss this um, later yeah, with um, um, another lecture. So what I want to point out here is by examining uh, properly, you can map the surgical margin yeah, when you want to do transoral laser surgery for a laryngeal carcinoma. So look at this. Okay, this is on white light. And then when you use an eye scan, you can see where exactly the lesion. You can see that it has involved the inferior circle of the vocal fold and slightly the subglottic region. So you know that when you do laser surgery, your surgery must extend beyond the inferior surface of the vocal fold to make sure that uh, you get adequate surgical margin. Okay, and you look at this. Yeah, like just now we saw the tumor is at the false cord and the uh, ventricle over here. But then when you turn on the eye scan, this is what I meant. You can see early mucosolution. Yeah, on the way above the uh, false cord, yeah, in the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis. This is on a stroboscopic view together with eye scan. This is a tumor that we saw and we can see this extension of the abnormal mucosa up to the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis. Okay, so that when we map this and we did a transoral laser surgery, we must uh, make sure that we remove um, the lesion adequately yeah, with good surgical margin. And this is the patient's um, larynx, three months of the surgery. This is at four months of the surgery and this is at uh, four months of the surgery with eye scan. Yeah? That is the anterior commissure, right vocal fold, the left vocal fold is no more there, it has been removed. Okay, And this is granuloma at the subglottic region. Okay, now we have come to the conclusion. Good good job, uh, Fike, uh, or Hillman. Good job, Hillman. She, he got the findings correct and diagnosis correct. So uh, in conclusion, video endoscopy uh, with image uh, enhanced technology is useful in detecting subtle mucosal changes and vascular pattern. Thus, it helps you to differentiate between a precancerous and cancerous pathology. And you may also like, although the, some patients that with risk factors, you may predict that, oh, this is a benign uh, lesion rather than a malignant lesion. And by combining the enhanced technology with video stroboscopy, uh, it is um, particularly useful and uh, a good complementary tools, complementary tools in evaluating extension and depth of tumor involvement. And it is useful in uh, detecting early recurrence. Okay, these are my references and thank you for your kind attention. So I, now I take question before we finish the, the lecture today. Okay, Prof. Actually, there's a question from Dr. AZ, Prof. Oh, Dr. AZ? Dr. AZ. Have yeah, I, but... I unshared the slide? Now you can't see the slide anymore, right? Uh, yeah. No, you just can't see my face. Uh, okay, Dr. AZ. Hi, AZ, my good friend. Thank you, AZ. Very nice presentation. How you performed uh, free margin. 
So first, uh, I use the uh, preoperatively uh, by using the eye scan, I map the surgical margin. And intraoperatively, I make sure that I follow the mapping uh, preoperatively. It would be very good if you have another tool uh, intraoperatively with rigid scope and uh, uh, and uh, enhanced technology where you can accurately map the surgical margin. The surgical margin in transoral laser cordectomy for CA is about one millimeter, one millimeter margin. And after we have removed that, we need to send, ideally, you need to send for a frozen section to ensure that you have removed everything. Okay. But then if you don't have a frozen section, um, you can send a margin after you have removed the tumor. You take multiple bites yeah, from different sites, mark the margin, posterior, anterior, superior, inferior, deep margin, and then review the HPE. If the HPE shows there is tumor left behind, the margin is involved, you have to go in as soon as possible. Okay, to uh, as soon as possible to uh, what do you call that? Um, to complete the excision. I hope that answers your question, Edzi. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Is there any question here? So the AZ actually have a problem in connection, Prof. So she I she write it uh, in the chat box. Okay. Maybe other question from other audience. Uh, there's a question, Prof. Uh, good morning, Prof. I would like to ask: Can video endoscopy with enhancement technology be used for examination in other parts, such as in nasopharynx? Thank you, Prof. Okay, yes, um, I have been using that uh, video endoscopy with enhanced technology to examine the nasopharynx in patient with NPC, right? Uh, patient who had undergone radiotherapy and uh, during follow-up, I um, used the flexible the video endoscope to examine the nasopharynx and turn on the um, eye scan to look at any um, residual but you know normally uh, within three months after radiotherapy is not really useful because um, you have to wait after three months and you examine then you decide whether you need to take another biopsy or there is no more tumor uh, in the nasopharynx and um, normally when I use the uh, flexible scope the video endoscope I don't just you know straight away examine the larynx I examine all the part uh, of the, um, what do you call that? The nose, the nasal cavity, the nasal pharynx. I can examine the, the ostomiatal complex as well. Yeah, Because some patients uh, who come with voice disorders, um, is, it is quite common for them to have a nose problem as well. post nasal drip, allergic rhinitis, and some of them have chronic rhinosinusitis. And I, I can you know examine uh, them using the video endoscope. Hmm. You don't have to change to a rigid scope for you to examine those areas. You need to properly decongest the nose and examine. I hope that answered the question. Thank you, Prof. <clears throat> Maybe other question from the audience? Still have no in chat box. Maybe you want to ask uh, directly to Prof. Marina. It's also can. Yep. Uh, Assalamualaikum Prof. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, I'm Irnanda from University of North Sumatra. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask about um, recurrent respiratory of papillomatous Prof. Mm -hmm. How long mm -hmm. usually the lesions transform to be a malignant after we do several debulking? Thank you, Prof. Okay. There's no uh, good question. Uh, what is your name again? Sorry. Hil Irnanda Prof. Ir Irnanda, Irnanda, good question, Irnanda. The answer to that question is we cannot predict when. Okay, that's why in RRP, um, number one, you cannot predict. Number two, it is not common, malignant transformation, but there is risk. Okay, especially if the patient continue to smoke, although the other, uh, uh, the patient has RRP and continue to drink alcohol. All right, and number three, 
If you suspect the patient has laryngopharyngeal reflux, you have to treat the laryngopharyngeal reflux because having all these uh, three things, yeah, like um, um, smoking, alcohol, laryngopharyngeal reflux, or any exposure to chemicals, which are uh, a risk factor for laryngeal carcinoma, would um, uh, further increase the risk of RRP to turn into malignant. Okay, so uh, when you have the patient with RRP, you don't just focus on RRP, you look, you advise the patient, look, you look for any risk factors or laryngeal carcinoma, advise the patient that this is benign tumor, but it can change to malignant. Um, the percentage is low. So that to further reduce the percentage of malignant transformation, the patient has to stop all the high-risk behavior. And you need to um, um, examine the patient regularly. Every time the patient come, yeah, examine endoscopically. And every time you debulk the tumor, you have to send for HPE to make sure that this is still a papilloma, not uh, the patient has not developed malignant transformation. It is rare. In my practice, I have just seen the three cases. One case from Indonesia, two cases in Malaysia, malignant transformation of RRP. So um, how long? Cannot tell. If the patient is um, have, have been practicing high-risk behavior, probably it is shorter. And probably some genetic component as well, which I don't know. Okay, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay. Dr. Rafiqa. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, is there any question from audience? Maybe we have a 15 minutes before we close the uh, lecture. Is there any mm -hmm. question? <coughs> Saya letak di Facebook ya, saya uh, terbang di alam maya pagi ini. Uh, seorang sahabat saya Malaysia katanya anaknya belajar di Universiti Sumatera Utara, medical. Oh, ya yeah, Prof. Medical student di sana. Ya. Yeah. Berapa, berapa ramai ya eh, Malaysia medical, Malaysian medical student di Universiti Sumatera Utara? Uh, six years, maybe, Prof. Six years or, or, or more. Maybe six, six hmm. or seven years. Ramai ke? Uh, are there many Malaysians there? In uh, many, Asia? Prof. Um, very, very, <laughs> maybe uh, two or uh, two class uh, uh, for the Malaysian, Prof. Oh, same. Because, uh, the, the, um, mm, uh, uh, in my in my uh, uh, study in University of Sumatera Utara, uh, is also have uh, international uh, students from Malaysia, Prof. So yeah. it's held for many years, Prof. Okay. All right. If there are no questions, shall we uh, end the lecture? Yeah. Is there any question from the audience? Maybe. Oh, oh there is a question. Uh, 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 would you kindly repeat about the type one to four, and thus it can be assessed by the. Uh, what is fall fall? Uh, I mean flexible optic laryngoscopy, doctor. Okay. Oh, okay. Fibro uh, laryngoscopy. Okay. Okay, so um, the answer is uh, if you want to see in detail vascular pattern, uh, fiber optic is not recommended because uh, fiber optic light is dim. Okay, and um, you tend to get um, the fiber optic light to be um, pixelated yeah, uh, or broken. Yeah, if the fiber optic light is broken, the images you would see a uh, black black dots like fungal yeah, on the larynx. Uh, I'm sure that you have experienced that. So the answer is if you want to use a fiber optic, high chance you wouldn't be able to see it. 
um, but if you use a video endoscopy with white light, yeah, if the tumor is big and the vessels are big, yeah, you may be able to see, okay. But the small one, early lesion, uh, small vessels, yeah, subtle vessels, uh, you may not be able to see using just video endoscopy. You still need to use enhanced technology because the vessel that you want to examine is not is a sub-epithelial vessel. And sub-epithelial vessel, there's a superficial and deeper part of the sub-epithelial vessel that you want to examine, in which um, by using enhanced technology, whether NBI or eye scan, they have a different layer, different penetration of the sub-epithelial vessel that you can, you can, you can see, yeah? you can examine. So yeah, that is my answer. Does it answer your question, Vani? You want to actually, ask further? Actually, she want to show, uh, you you to show the uh, type one to four the enhanced uh, laryngeal imaging prof. Oh, the, the slide. Is, yeah, the slide. The slide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe she did more. Uh, uh, to, to see more of the uh, the imaging prof. Okay, Vani, is this this slide what you meant? It's type one, two, three, and four. Uh, yes, type, prof. Yeah, two, three, and four are perpendicular vessels. Type one is longitudinal. Okay, and in type two is the one that normally you see in RRP. Yeah, perpendicular. Um, some people call it punctate hemorrhage. Yeah, uh, it has wide angle turning point. So therefore, you see dot 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 dot. Okay, from from the surface. For type three, you can see dots, but they are symmetric. You can see one uh, dark vessel, dark dot, and next to it there's a lighter dot. Yeah, symmetric because of the um, turning the the narrow turning point. Yeah, so you can see side to side. And it normally indicates um, type 3. And once you see the symmetric light dots, it is called um, intraepithelial capillary loops. Yeah? And another uh, type of intraepithelial capillary loops is type 4. Okay, It is a worm-like vessel, which you can see a spiral morphology. Okay, Then um, I show this diagram. Okay, This is lesion smooth lesion and then become warty lesion this is this indicate cancer uh, malignant and this one is a pre malignant lesion here yeah pre malignant lesion so um, the ipcl is developed secondary to epithelial cancerogenic stimulus yeah um, so the for precancerous it has um, narrow turning point so from the surface you would be able to see the angle, the turning point, and the tip. So you can see two dots, symmetrical dots here and there, here and. But once, sorry, here is the precancerous. But once the the tumor become malignant, you can see the vessel become spiraling, and this one is a worm-like vessel. Okay. So this is an example of precancerous lesion, a pre-malignant uh, with high-grade dysplasia. You can see the dots is side to side, yeah, side to side, and this one is a spiral type, yeah, here like this. Huh? You can see the spiral type, which indicate a malignant tumor. Okay, so if you see a vessel as big as this. Uh, with video endoscope with white light, you may be able to see. For example, I show in here. Um, yeah, so this is white light, yeah? Because the vessel, the spider vessel is big. You can, maybe you can see, but it's not that clear. But once you turn, the eye scan, it become clearer. Okay, it become clearer. But if the vessel is smaller than this, like uh, the other like RRP uh, with a smaller type of spiral vessel, 
you wouldn't be able to see with a video endoscopy white light. With fiber optic, um, is um, I I'm I think you wouldn't be able to see because the fiber optic light is dim. What do you think, Doctor Arfiza? Your fiber optic in your in your clinic? Do you think it can visualize these vessels? No, sir, Prof. Mm. It's also uh, this violation is very difficult to uh, uh, differentiate uh, from the malignant and also the uh, benign lesion, Prof. Mm. Uh, also, uh, um, the smooth smooth surface is also can uh, sometimes it's very difficult to differentiate also uh, from the uh, irregular uh, surface of the lesion, Prof. So maybe the video laryngoscope is still the best for. Uh, that diagnosis. I have referrals from other centers. Uh, their initial diagnosis is LPR, but when we when I examine, it is not LPR. It's either precancerous or malignant lesion. So having a good endoscope is pertinent. Yeah, it is not like your nose. Nose have no issue, uh, because uh, if you use a rigid scope, okay, you can breach. Uh, whatever parts in the nose, yeah, because it's very short, very near to the entry point. But for larynx, you have to go all the way from the nose, yeah. And if you have, if you use a fiber optic scope, the image has to travel through the fiber optic until it reach the camera, which is at the uh, the beginning of the scope, the camera head. Whereas if you use a video endoscope, the camera is at the tip. And also, Prof, uh, diameters of the laryngoscope is also uh, 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 depends on it also because mm -hmm. sometimes if the uh, millimeters of the laryngoscope, we, we use a video laryngoscope, but it's still as small uh, when you use it in adult adult uh, patient. Uh, sometimes it's also the light is not really clear. So sometimes we just see it red or some uh, just not really can differentiate about the lesion uh, the 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 uh, the color of the lesion and other uh, normal uh, normal uh, mucosa so uh, it also depends on also uh, from the uh, millimeters of the laryngoscope also prof okay i don't think we have any more questions Maybe if there's no question, we can uh, close this uh, meeting, Prof. It's also okay. true. Okay. Thank you, Prof, for the uh, lecture. It's very, very interesting and very, very uh, uh, make us uh, uh, more uh, knowledge. We can, uh, we can, we can uh, 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 had uh, so thank you very much for uh, maybe another next le lecture we, we we hopefully uh, you can give more more information about the laryngology uh, thank you for the audience that uh, patient for uh, this lecture and uh, every uh, month that attendee to this lecture and also uh, maybe the next uh, lecture will be more more and more interesting uh, from the uh, from the start okay uh, thank you very much for us for the uh, sharing the knowledge for us it's very very uh, 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 interesting and very uh, uh, increase our knowledge. Uh, thank you for our attendee. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Salam. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Izin Prof, mungkin bisa foto bersama sebelum itu. Oh ya Prof, tunggu saya lupa foto. Eh, Dr. Ezi lagi operasi Prof. Uh, Sabtunya Dr. Ezi dengan Dr. Novialdi pastinya dalam bilik operasi. Uh, minggu ini enggak, Prof. Ada acara Down Syndrome Blood Healing Day. Oh, Dr. Novialdi dia. Yeah. <laughs> Hari ini Dr. Ezi ada dia. Yeah, dia. Ganti, kamar ya, bedah ya, kamar bedah. Yeah. Sehat, Prof? Ez Sehat, Alhamdulillah. Saya Alhamdulillah. Uh, post COVID dua minggu. Allah, tapi dah sihat, tak apa apa ya. Sudah, sebatuk batuk sikit, batuk gatal. Semoga cepat sembuh, Prof. Okay, insyaallah.
Ya, okay. Sampai ketemu akan uh, datang. InsyaAllah. Okay. Ezi buat apa? Buat kes apa Ezi di sana? Dr. Novi Aldi uh, boleh hmm, dibincangkan nanya. lagi ya yang nanti boleh WhatsApp saya yeah. mengenai studentnya. Oh. Ya. Yeah. Ah. Itu Dr. Fani. Dr. Fani. Dr. Fani mau uh, apa mau uh, fellowship atau or, 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 apa pendidikannya okay, ke yeah. Boleh, ya? Nanti kita lanjutkan. Lanjutkan. Ezi okay. apa kesnya di sana Ezi? Ezi hey, Oh dia pakai itu patut tidak nam- tidak boleh dengar suaranya. Enggak apa Ezi, enggak apa. Okay. Ah dengannya vocal cord. Okay. <laughs> Maybe okay. we can we can uh, photo first before okay. we end sure. this meeting. Sure sure. Izin saya bantu ya Prof dan Dokter dalam hitungan ketiga dalam hitungan mundur 3 2 1 akan saya ambil gambarnya 3 2 1 sekali lagi izin 3 2 1 yang terakhir 3 2 1 terima kasih Prof Dokter terima kasih terima kasih Prof terima kasih Dokter Izi bye bye terima kasih Dokter Prof yang Dokter Izi ya ya makasih baik juga Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Saya live ya. Assalamualaikum. 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 Terima kasih Prof. Dr. Abang Kakak atas, atas partisipasi pada kuliah tamu hari ini. Izin saya mengendalikan Zoom uh, pada pagi hari ini. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.